Get them fired up and get them to the staging lanes, baby, because Eighth Mile Apparel is now carrying Glowing Bracket Racing merch. Hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and much more can be yours today by visiting EighthMileApparel.com. We appreciate each and every one of you guys supporting the Glowing Bracket Racing YouTube and Facebook pages. everybody march 26th 2024 episode 148 of going bracket racing live where you can find us every single tuesday on youtube and facebook click the bell notification on youtube hit the subscribe button and then it'll let you know that we're in all the time but as usual we got to thank tsr racing products brg 3d printed parts Syntex Printing, Driven Racing Oil. Use the code GBR10. Get yourself 10% off your order over there. They're called Driven Racing Oil, but they sell transmission fluid too. They sell rear end oil. They sell all kinds of stuff. They sell cleaning products, man. And Brandon Lane, who's the most stickler guy that I know, says he likes the Driven Speed Wax best because it smells better. I'm just saying. Then their competitor, which I almost said, but I'm not going to. Proform Parts. Visit ProformParts.com for your carburetors, alternators, starters, radiators, distributors, and tools for the shop. Crew Chief Pro Software. Don Higgins will get that figured out for you. Figure out what your new combo is going to run this year. We know it's the first part of the year, and a lot of y'all are traveling for the first time right now, which we'll get into a little while later. And, of course, if you want any of this cool GBR apparel, we got hats, T-shirts, get you a tree chopper shirt if you want to strike some fear into the heart of your opponents in the staging lanes on 8thMileApparel.com. George, what's the weather like at your house, man? Beautiful. It's definitely beautiful out there. Uh, caught myself out there raking out some thatch and trying to clean out a little bit of my yard. Um, I guess it gets pretty windy and they're doing a lot of building around here. So I got a lot of weeds in my yard and I'm pretty particular about how my lawn looks. And so I'm not very thrilled about that part. Nonetheless, a um, little bit of a uh, little bit of a uh, bandwidth from my body being my arms in a rake and I'll have everything ready to grow some new grass here before too long. So weather's perfect though. Can't complain about anything. The only thing I can complain about is I'm not strapped into my race car. Uh, making laps down the track and, and kind of getting some data off of old Mo. Got a little bit of uh, some different things going on inside of him, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, as I'm sure you've uh, you've made a few changes to old Blue as well. So definitely, um, definitely looking forward to a good year, man. It's 2024 big money bracket racing is on the horizon, and uh, I I couldn't think of anything better to talk about today except for that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, man. Mega Money Tour starts here, man. Literally here in my backyard. And I can't even attend because I ended up having to work on this pool this weekend. So I don't have to do it in the middle of summer. So here I am. But at least I'll be able to watch it on Motor Mania TV. Watch all my buddies out there at The Rock. Which, by the way, George, I think before we even get into talking about the race, we need to talk about the changes that have happened at Rockingham Dragway, man. Because it's not the same old drag strip that everybody thinks. And if you want to learn a little bit more about this, George and I did a really good interview at PRI uh, sometime right before Christmas with Dan and Al, the new owners of Rockingham Dragway. And number one, this is the only thing they do now, I believe. So 
Rockingham has to be good. And that's the position you want a track operator and owner to be in because they have to make the facility nice. They have to put on a good show because this is how they make their money. This is how they put food on the table. So, you know, it's it's always a good position for the racer to be in. Uh, to have the owner have a vested interest in this isn't just a tax write-off for them. This isn't just a hobby for them. This is actually their, their job. And that's why you see all these changes at Rockingham Dragway. I want to say two weeks ago, maybe, they had three tractors running up and down, laying rubber on that track. They had a tire rotator out there. I know they have a jet dryer, so if you ever have any kind of rain coming in, they can get it dried off real quick. It's not blowers out there it's the real jet dryer type deal um, dan told us at pri that they called in hra it's an nhra track they called in hra and said what would it take to actually have a national event here at some point and he said it's a big list and they're trying to check things off and whittle it down i know they put in a bunch of rv electricity there they just redid the bar over there um you know there's Tons and tons of improvements have been happening at Rockingham Dragway, one of them being laying, I want to say, 800 feet of new concrete and laser cutting it. And now, like I said, all new rubbers on it. Ducks bringing radial outlaws there uh, for civil wars this time next month. So, I mean, those are literally the fastest door cars out there right now. There's ADRL is going to be there. Also, the fastest big tire cars. So we got the fastest small tire cars, fastest big tire cars. The point is, is the track's going to work. That's the whole point I'm trying to make here. SFG has four or five mega bracket races there. Four, four. Definitely was what was going to be one of my main points. And something we spoke to uh, the owners of Rockingham there at PRI about. And honestly, I couldn't think of uh, a better way to start off or, or present a big money bracket racing program number one in the mecca of of racing whatever type of racing you want to call it call it circle track you guys probably take the cookie on boat racing too i really don't know you know what i mean but seemingly most of the majority of motor motorsports happens out there in the carolinas and um uh, what <laughs> what better way to introduce rockingham or the new owners of rockingham to bracket racing than to have one of the leading promoters in our sport right now host for what i would call mega money payouts but very very affordable entry fee races which is it's his forte in the first place that being sfg promotions casey man i want to say to race for 50 grand it might be 225 dollars okay i can give you an example of what what would be the equivalent of that type of an entry fee we do this a little bit on gbr casey i've seen your your post that uh might come out about four o'clock in the morning where everybody else is still asleep casey's wheels might be running and telling us what's the difference in between racing in the 80s and racing now cost wise well that same 200 dollars at least i might be 25 dollars more to go race sfg but I can tell you I'm $40,000 less as a winner because $200 gets me into a ten grand or around where I am right now. Um, so if that's anything that is food for thought, on one hand, I could race for ten grand for $200. Or on the other hand, I could race for fifty grand for $225. Pretty sure you guys see where I'm going with that, Casey. Talk to me about the entry fees and what that's going to mean to Rockingham, the area, North Carolina, that area. Uh, what's that going to mean to that area? It'll bring in a ton of people. I mean, at the end of the day, again, this is the first mega race uh, as far as the series goes. We did have Loose Rocker a little earlier this year, paid 40 grand to win both days. Uh, that was due to a rain out, but paid, paid a decent amount of money at Galat Motorsports Park. My buddy Blaine Parrish was just getting out there and just pocketing all that money. Heard his, heard his buddy Thomas Davis's feelings. One very nice old Blaine to go over there and pick on his buddy like that. But uh, glad to see both of them in the finals of that that deal over there. But ultimately, man, um, I got the flyer up over here in front of me, so I'm just going to read straight off the flyer. $150 for the warm-up race, which is Thursday. Friday and Saturday, both 50 granders for $450 get you in both of them. Now, 
the cool thing about all this is once you start winning third round any day, you start making money. So it's very, there's going to be a lot of people that don't pay to race this race. There's going to be a lot of people that earn money racing this race. It's one of the things that SFG uh, really does right, which is push a lot of the money back. And uh, I feel like he has two, he has two ways how he does it. He either lets you race for a whole lot of money on top for cheap. Or he lets you race for still a whole lot of money, but pushes it back in the purse for cheap. Because something, and looking at the flyer, this is kind of in the same manner, and we know it gets split up. One thing that I always liked, and we talked about this with TV promotions last week on the whole Verge topic. Um, the thing I liked about TG, TV promotions, whenever they did their 64 car shootout and it turned into 128, they didn't put all the money on top. They pushed it all back. So a lot of people make money. It's right. not It's not just breaking even. You're starting to make money. Um, I'd like to see more of that. But, I mean, as far as running for $50,000 twice for $450, I mean, if you don't have to – if you could, if you can squeeze your way through and not have to buy back in any of that deal, you're never going to get a deal like that anywhere else. It's a fact. And, and, and honestly, that's uh, – I, I say it's a fact because it really is, guys. We can look at any flyer you want to look at. Um, and I know there's some good racing out there. I know one of the guests that we'll have today puts on a, a really good 10 grander for a hundred dollars a day and that's getting it done too. Still $100 more than what I spoke about in the beginning. So you ask me running for a 10 grand for a hundred dollars is that's a stout deal. I don't care how you look at it. Okay. But we, we know based on what we have on the internet, Facebook, it's it's the social media age. We can go and look at any flyer you want to, and you won't be able to show me one flyer uh, that is running for fifty thousand dollars or more that has the price the price tag of a ten grander. You won't be able to show me another one. It's it, literally it's impossible. I actually challenge anybody if you know of a race that is similar to the to the purse and similar to the entry fee. Go ahead and send it to me so I can. Uh, be made into a, a, a lie, uh, somebody not telling the truth here. So uh, I don't think you'll be able to do it, but I'm welcome. I'm welcome and anybody who can do it. Um, Casey, man, one thing that I really, really enjoy about every SFG event, as opposed to any big money event for that for that matter, is this one's going to be televised on Motor Mania TV. And that's going to give anybody who didn't think about making a trip, maybe they wanted to save their trip for something else for some unforeseen reason. I wouldn't know what that might be at this cost point, especially if you're in that area or within, I'd say, six hours. Six hours away and you should be coming to this race if you're a drag racer. But Motor Mania is going to show us something that has a, a lot of love has been put into this track. And we've we've kind of highlighted it quite a bit, uh, Casey, with the new bar going in, you know, with I believe they shaved the track. They may have done this and that and the third. I don't, I don't have all the particulars of what all has been done to that track. I can just view and, and we'll, we'll all be able to watch what looks to be a really smooth surface, in my opinion, because I've yet to see Rockingham either. But we talked about this many times about the live streaming events and how they give us a view of tracks that we've never been to, making it easier for us to add said track to a bucket list. What do you think about the the viewership that Rockingham's going to be able to provide? You think we're going to gain? Um, this is the first of four races. I'm going to think, and then you can you can chime in here. But race number two is going to be more packed than race number uh, number one, in my opinion. Because a lot of people are going to get a chance to look at that track. What do you think? Rockingham Dragway, I can tell you right now, is going to have all the locals as far as anybody who, I'll say anybody who normally races a weekend race at Galat, their points program, they're all going to be there. I know of at least 12 or 13 people that are going to be there that are going to be double entered by my, just in my mind right now. Um, we do have uh we do have a really good race at Roxborough going on this weekend. I see Nova fans talking about that. Uh, if you if you enter all three days, fifty bucks a day to run for four grand in top and bottom. Um, so that's that's a good race for that. There's ten grand at Coastal Plains. There's two hundred car shootout for seventy five hundred up a VMP. Um, so there's a lot going on this weekend, man. There's a this is a terrible weekend to have to work on my wife's pool. I can tell you that. But uh, and it's going to be great weather. But Ultimately, 
I think there's going to be a ton of people at Rockingham Dragway. I think there's going to be a lot of the Florida boys that are coming up that are headed out to Vegas to go to the spring fling out there. I think that uh, they're going to readjust their route where they're going to come up through um, to go to Rockingham, see if they can pay some entries before they make that big long track, which, by the way, uh, is 2,304 miles from Las Ve- or from Rockingham Dragway to Ro- Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And uh, that would be 34 hours, just yeah. so everyone's aware. 1,500 miles just on I-40. Mm. Just, just saying. But there's a lot of these guys that are coming up from Florida, man, that I expect to see out there. Kevin Brandon's in South Carolina. I expect him to potentially come up to Rockingham, and maybe he'll fly in. I know he, he drove that car. It said Cascade on the side where he – I don't know if he won or he runnered up out there a couple years ago. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that are coming up from that way that if they're hauling all their stuff out, I don't see them skipping Rockingham to go to Vegas. Right. And it's a good it's a good start to the year, in my opinion. I mean, when, like you said, Loose Rockers had a race and maybe some rain got into that when it kind of put us into a little bit more money for that race. Defining it, defining big money bracket racing, in my opinion, and, and I'm just going to throw my opinion out here. I'm thinking about 50 grand or more should be equal equivalent of big money. What do you think? Is it still in the 20s for big money nowadays? I know this is off subject to what we're going to get into, but let's define Big money bracket racing here real quick for the audience. How much money are we talking about, Casey? And that's a hard question. Yeah, it's it's it hard is. to define. It's hard to define that anymore because when I was younger, when I first started racing, a lot of these guys that are winning races right now, back in the day was whenever I was actually good and winning races. The, uh, back then, we would call fives and tens big money. Uh, I mean, I remember when Gateway had Super Mega Bucks, it was unheard of. And, you know, that was, I think, $50,000 on the big day. And, I mean, anymore, what we're looking right now at uh, this weekend is going to have twin 50s. Um, I think that the Spring Fling is going to – well, they have, the, obviously, the Spring Fling Million, which is a graduated system that could potentially pay a million dollars if there was 500 entries or something. But, I mean, they're having twin 30s, I think, or triple 30s or something plus the million. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, man. I I think at this point there might almost be two different classes of racer for a bracket racer anymore. There might be a budget local racer. There might be a middle of the road racer. It's almost like, uh, college, uh, baseball, minor league baseball and the major leagues. It doesn't, it seem like that would be close to a good analogy it's a great one actually in my opinion you know you go from from a to or a double a to triple a to the league you know what i mean right. so it's kind of similar to what we got going on in, in bracket racing where if i had to like you said if i had to put a monetary amount on what would be a class it's going to be their local races maybe your two and three thousand dollar to win races maybe a hundred dollars to enter at most places i think it's a little better out there at galat where it's like five thousand dollars for uh, to win for a hundred dollars to enter, I think something like that, Casey, you'd know. But um, and then coming up from there, I'm thinking, you know, in that intermediate class, uh, our guest today will be able to speak quite a bit into this class, in my opinion. Uh, CP Promotion puts on a great set of ten granders, and I mean, there's, I think there's four different sets of ten granders this year. They're four days a piece, I think. Maybe one of them being three days. Um, and I'm looking here at the bluegrass race, which we'll get into that. It's a three day race as well. But you're talking about ten grand on the top and seventy five hundred on the bottom. Well, that seems to me like the 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 triple A class of racing, in my opinion. And then we talk about the SFG promotions, the spring flings, the Great American Boys, and those boys will put on the twenties and the fifties and the the loose rocker fellas and and uh, loose rocker fellas. That kind of sounded pretty good. Anyway, and, uh, oh uh, oh my goodness, Michael Beard even puts on some some intermediate to 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 major league races, in my opinion. So there's a, TB here's promotions a good, can't leave those guys out. Go ahead. Right. Here's a couple good comments on it. Uh, Dylan Champion, big money in my opinion varies on who you ask. If it's life changing, who wins it? then it's big money. Five grand is big money to me. Quez, if it's enough to cover the bills for the track that day and bills for the month at that house, that's big money. Right. And that's the truth, man. Like, what what's big money to you 
might not be big money to me, might not be big money to someone else. I mean, if you, it, the greater the risk, the greater the reward, ultimately. I'll take a cue from Brian Whitworth here on the Facebook side. And of course, that's TV promotions. And he says here, but believe there, he believes there's quite a bit of crossover in all three. I actually agree with that comment 100% to where every now and then, you know, just like in the major leagues, if you're doing good, you get pulled up from AAA into the majors. And if you're doing bad, you get dropped from AAA into A. The same thing happens here in bracket racing where, hey, I might have saved a little bit of money by switching to Geico. <laughs> you guys can uh, call us if you want to be marketing partners after that one. But uh, I might have saved some money enough to where I can go and enter into one of these big races with hopes of turning on the electricity in my lane all the way down to the finish. Who knows, right? But there is a little bit of crossover. And let's talk about that a little bit, Casey, because I think we're going to experience that at, at Rockingham. And honestly, um, I, think, I think I saw some comments here out of Jim Howard says, milled and profiled, starting line all the way out, looks to around 400 feet past the scoreboards in both lanes. So that track seemingly is all but brand new. You know what I yeah. mean? That's going to be smooth extreme, glass, extremely smooth all the way down. Oh, yeah. So, and go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, don't forget that Brian's partner in TB Promotions, the, the T part of TB, is Tyler Bohannon. And Tyler Bohannon has won NHRA championships. He has won the biggest – or what the there's two races, the biggest bracket race of all time, million-dollar race, the legitimate million-dollar win race. Uh you know, so they know they know everything there is to know about crossover. They know everything there is to know about the bigger the risk, bigger the reward. Uh, you know, they know how to get it done out there. But when we go back to talking about Rockingham Dragway, I expect that track to be as smooth as glass. And here's the reason why. Right now, Duck X Promotions has been on and on and on about the record race, the record race, the record race. And I think he's going to have a full outlaw race. Now, it's not going to be at Rockingham, I don't think. But sometime this year, he's going to take the gloves off and see who can get the radio record. Stevie Fast just set the radio record 348 last weekend. To, for a radio car to go that fast, the track has to be as sticky as you can possibly get and as smooth as glass. And that's what Rockingham is willing to put up because next month they're going to be there. If a radial car can go that speed down that track, which we're not going to know till next month, but I assure you it will, then the, the only that's the only way it can do it. So yeah. a bracket car is going to A to B, A to B every time. If a your car doesn't work at Rockingham this weekend, more than likely, that's your fault. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's a good time to segue into that, too, because, you know, the the a couple weeks back, you know, I went out to CP uh, Promotions and streamed a race in Port Allen, Louisiana, and... Man, I mean to tell you, that track was 100% flawless, uh, thanks to Brandon Mass coming out there and laying down one heck of a, a track. It turned that race into every car is running dead on. What are your thoughts on that? Because it's it's kind of a hit, it's a double-edged sword almost with a perfect track, in my opinion, and it's kind of an elephant in the room in, in, in a way, too. For our sport, and I know this is off topic, but this is what I expect to see at most big money racing events is an excellent track. It's prepped well. It's it, If I come and spend $200 to race for ten grand, I don't want to have a $100, $1,000 to win track. Do you know what I mean? I'm putting $200 on the line. I expect to race on a $10,000 prepped track. There is a such thing, right? What are your thoughts on on tracks being prepped to the nines almost to where all cars run dead on. I happen to love it. Um, I don't think there should be any any variable that says the track should cost you a race. What are your thoughts, Casey? As long as both lanes are the same, I don't really care what's happening no matter what. I don't. If we're no prep racing and we're no prep racing in both lanes, that's fine with me. Um, if we are... Uh, if we're having a flypaper track, then it better be flypaper in both lanes. Um, yeah. Ultimately, as far as my opinion goes, I just say that as long as everybody's on the same playing field, it doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah. Um, so, But I can tell you right now that uh, if I'm racing for a million dollars and I spent, what, $3,000 to get in the race or something like that, then I expect the track to be perfect because there shouldn't be any variable there. Um, 
you know, I think as far as talent goes, you're going to see a more talented racer. Uh, someone like a Scotty Richardson or something is going to come out of the woodwork whenever the track is mediocre. Um, I think that if you're A to B in, I think you're going to see those really expensive dragsters and really expensive door cars um, on a flypaper track. I think those things are going to end up going deeper than they otherwise typically would. Um, you know, so it's a matter of what type of racer, I guess, is going to win the race kind of tells you what's what's what i can tell you right now that if a track's mediocre my money's on scotty richardson all the time sure, period sure, sure i can think of a few i i, I, can't, I really can't I, I take it back i can't think of anybody else who i would pick on, on on any track at that at that matter uh good track bad track mediocre track doesn't matter to me scotty well, richardson also, at the top of the list i would also say if i can't pick scotty i would probably pick underwood or troy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be my top three on a mediocre track. And uh, hey, all of these names are, are definitely, uh, they have a really good shot at being out here at Rockingham, in my opinion. Um, especially the Williams brothers and uh, and uh, Kenny Underwood. I expect these guys to be out there. Now, Scotty, I don't know if we'll see him much all year long. Maybe at the OG. Uh, hopefully, we'll see him kind of go out the OG. I still think he's chasing that one, if I'm not wrong. So, hopefully, we'll see him out there at the OG, but... Yeah, Casey, that question's been burning me for a little bit because um, I feel like, I don't know if this is 100% right, but I was walking through the race and a lot of people were talking about how good the track was taking the variable out of cars that don't readily run as good as they should or, or as good as they um, are right now because they're on such a good track. So figured I'd bring that question up to you. But yeah, I, don't, I don't think a car should ever lose like, a few hundreds in the 60 or whatever just because it's not absolutely not perfect yeah but i also don't think that that same car should go out there and be able to just vary a thou that same setup just because the track's better um i don't know that's a really weird that's a really weird thing man because uh it's a double-edged sword casey it it's goes, a, it's, both, it, it goes ways. both ways man and jake hodges is throwing his two cents in here telling us all to get off them hoosiers I ain't getting off them Hoosiers. I'm going to tell you that right now. I like my Hoosiers, but I'm with you on the uh, hey, torque Jake. converter and the uh, front shocks. We don't have a tire sponsor, bro. So send us one our way and we'll let us let us check them out. I'll check them out for you, man. I got I got a fast car coming that can test some stuff for them. I got me a real turd slow car that can test them. Oh, man. Here's Brian Phillips here saying, Peter Biondo shows up and everybody else is competing for a second I think he's proven that a, a time and time again, and I don't care what stage we're on. So uh, you've, you've got no fight out of me, Brian. I'm, I don't this have a comment a, against that. huh? <laughs> this is typically the time of year that I think they have that big race in Tucson that Peter always seems to back-to-back -to -back win or something like that. So if he's out there right now, I don't know if his uh, – I feel like his boy's old enough to – or one of them. I don't know if he's got two or not. I can't remember. But I know one of them, I think – or maybe his nephew. One of them's old enough where the kid can drive now, and he does really good also. Which, if he if if a Beyondo sucked, that would just blow my mind because I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible either. I don't know which tires he's on either. Jake Hodge is making his Here's, boy. He's he's uh he he's he he's doing some politicking here. right now for them sticky Mickeys out here. He says he'd rather go to the lanes on some flat Mickeys than to run some Hoosiers. Wow. Well, they're definitely gonna be flat. <laughs> Flat one of these days, crying out loud. We know how those Mickeys are, but hey, you hey, know what? I wouldn't mind it. trying out Mickey myself. I just, you know, hey, huh? I had a, uh, I had a tire deal through them when I was like sixteen or seventeen, maybe through the time I was eighteen. But anyway, I was told just so everybody knows, because uh, I know a lot of y'all run run Mickey Thompsons. They do leak. Everybody knows that Mickey Thompsons go flat. That's because the sidewall is so thin. If you take Dawn dishwashing soap. You don't put water in it. Just take the soap and paint it in the sidewall with a paintbrush and then mount them to the wheel and put them out in the driveway and let them bake in the sun, flip them over, let them bake in the sun for another hour or something. They don't leak anymore. I've heard and that's that what trick. nobody, yeah, nobody knows. We we were doing that. When did I have that deal, George, 20 years ago, something like that? Something like that, man. Something like that. Jake, Jake will let us know if that's true or not. I'm sure he's tried it, but J.J. Pennington's in the chat now. He's saying Hoosiers to the front. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm right there with you, big, uh, big JJ Hoosiers to the front. Thank you very much. I'm definitely on Hoosiers. So, 
Jake, you got your work cut out for you, big boy, trying to get us off that. But no, man, back to the big money bracket racing side of things. And um, definitely, it's, it's 2024 is going to be awesome, number one. That's just number one. I want to put that out there. Multiple reasons. And and um, not only the AAA and the A and uh, or, or the poker tournaments that Brian was uh, mentioning on, on the Facebook side, national, regional, and then... Uh, something else or another. The per the only thing different is the uh, the purse size, which is is fitting. But we've got a lot going on, a lot going on. We'll have the teams race coming up soon out of the Great American Boys. Be able to watch that race. It was it was absolutely uh amazing to watch that race in person last year. And uh, wish I had a team to take to that race this year out there in Holly Springs. But 2024, we're just now getting ready to get it going. And uh, I, I can't think of a better way to start it out right off the rip here with uh, getting a good look at Rockingham, seeing SFG put on a uh, put on a pretty good, pretty big, big money race. I think only one day has a weather threat, Casey. I, I want to say he said Thursday may have may be a little bit of that R word on Thursday's uh, warm up race. But I know he's petitioned to put on a Sunday race. Uh, if the racers want to stick around and if Rockingham is okay with that, um, potentially putting on a Sunday race. So, yeah, yeah I man. mean, that would be, in my opinion, I I don't really like the, uh, I don't like the format that a lot of these big money guys have gone to where they start on Thursday. So Sunday's a travel day and you can be at work on Monday. I, it doesn't make sense to me because it's like, okay, well, if you're taking a day, then aren't, aren't I taking off Wednesday to get there Thursday versus taking off Monday to come home so I can race Sunday. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and there's plenty of people, a race like this, in my opinion, that there's plenty of people I would say the vast majority of whoever's going to be at this race is from the Carolina, Virginia area, uh, Tennessee area also. Uh, so everybody's going home and going to work on Monday the next anyway. Monday anyway, yeah. Uh, so so I don't, I just don't really understand that um, way of thinking, um, because in my opinion, again, you got to, well, not even in my opinion. The fact is, is. If you're going to race Thursday, you have to leave Wednesday to get there then. So now you're taking off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when you could have taken off Thursday, Monday. It's right. the same thing. Right. You know, so it, it that doesn't make any sense to me. But then again, you know, I'm not typically in attendance at these races. And I, I'm sure somebody took a poll amongst people and talked to people. And that's what they said. A lot of these people are typically business owners. So maybe they figure you know, they need to be there Monday to, to take phone calls and stuff. So, you know, that's realistically thinking about it. That's probably, maybe that is the right thing. One thing I, I failed. I don't run these races. It's not my decision. One thing I failed to ask too, and I think you still got that flyer up, Casey. Did you see a cap on this first race? I feel like this is a capped event as well. Did you see a cap on it? On the SFG race? Yeah, in Rockingham. Because I know there's a cap on the ones coming in coming up like the super bowl I, I think is capped at like 280 something entries or something so whatever i whenever i saved it i just cropped it out so all oh, I, I have you. is the uh the date where it's at and and the purse payouts and stuff like that and entry fees i i don't have any of that information so but i i don't know uh if there is or not i don't think that will be an issue personally either way yeah i don't think so either i mean they're gonna fill that they're gonna fill that track up dude, dude the weather <laughs> is I'll I'll just look it up here real quick because I can put in my zip code and give you the general uh, weather forecast for this event. But as I mean, well, but don't be shocked if it's above seventy each day. <laughs> oh, it's definitely going to be up seventy. I want to say one day the high is eighty. Um, I mean, it's it's legitimately going to be the best weather possible as far as racing is concerned. Right. Um, so yeah, Friday. There's doesn't. It looks like there will be rain on Thursday. But Friday, 67 for a high, 45 for a low. Saturday, 74 for a high, 52 for a low. Sunday, 79, 55 for a low. Sunny all those days. So, I mean, if it was me and I was going over there to race for three days, I'd say move that Thursday race to Sunday. Because the thing is also, the way that Kyle has this all laid out is pretty smart because the, the warm-up race is its own deal and then the 250s are their own deal. So anybody coming for the 50s and then going to Vegas to go race Peter's race, they don't have to worry about it because the other race is separate. You're not paying a full weekend three-day fee. You're only paying the 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 only thing that's together 
is the 250s for $450. Right. So you could have someone like the Williams boys that you know are going to come up, hit SFG, and going to keep going to Vegas. They could come up, hit the 50s Friday, Saturday, leave out, and go to Vegas, and they still got three days to get there before they start in Vegas. Right. So, and then all the locals, whoever's whoever wants to stay, can stay and run $150 for $15,000. And there's also a good chance that more local people that weren't intending on going to this race might show up and run that race if it's on Sunday because it's only $150 to run for $15,000 plus all the round money. So now you got all the local guys that couldn't get off on Thursday that maybe they show up and race on Sunday now. So, I mean, it, it could actually work out better for them. Makes sense. No, it makes total sense. Uh, but, uh, guys, as we continue to talk about big money here and give a little bit more time for our guest of the day to join in for the last half of this show, I want to go over a little bit more of that kind of AAA, I think, is what I'll call this particular race, Casey. And it's something that really, really struck me as an excellent idea last year when Mid-State Raceway or Mid-State Drag Strip... Um, I always mess up track names, but when they came up with the idea of the Lucky Sevens and paid all those seven granders out, I want to say it might have been six big weekends worth of $7,500 to win. They won up themselves this year, Casey, and I don't know if you've seen that. Hopefully, I'm not going to be breaking any news to anybody watching this show right now, but just so happened if you're in the Midwest or anywhere near the Midwest and you can make your way out to Mid-State Dragway, Six times this year, they're going to run for twin 10Ks. And I mean to tell you, there's going to be more to come on this flyer. I'll do the best that I can to have uh, either either Greg or Rashawn or, or Brad come on to the show and actually give us more of a breakdown, more of a thought process behind this particular series of events. But it is a point series style race, Casey. Um, as you and I both are big time, big time fans of point series uh, races, this particular race is going to be one of the highlights of the year, in my opinion, for that AAA, uh, that AAA area of racing. And uh, we might as well call it that, Casey. I think it's it's well named at this point, being a AAA style race. I want to talk about another thing that's not well publicized, and I'm just going to throw it out there. This particular track goes above and beyond for its racer, because I know I heard that they gave away entries to the major league events. I think they may have put someone in who done well in the uh, in the mid state uh tw the the 7500s into the OG million for this year and so on and so forth. So th this was for showing up and and showing that you got what it takes to compete on a higher level. Bashan and crew at the mid state dragway decides to throw what I would call a triple A a triple A racer into the major leagues. What are your thoughts on that? And do we see that as a potential boost into the local bracket races or the triple A version of bracket races? What are your thoughts? Second, man, because it gives the opportunity for a local racer, especially in that area, because this isn't like you go win a race in, I don't know, Florida or something, and they're like, oh, you want to entry to the million or something, which is at Gateway in St. Louis. This is giving somebody the opportunity who can legitimately go. Uh, they don't have to sell the entry. They can legitimately go to a race and compete in a race that they otherwise couldn't potentially afford. Uh, maybe they could afford it, but didn't want to fork out $2,000 to try to win one race whenever, you know, a lot of people can race for two months on that kind of money. Right. Uh, you know, so, uh, and me growing up in that area, I know that's the way that a lot of people think. They think, I want to race more. I don't want to race for more money necessarily. I want to be able to race every single weekend. Uh, different areas of the country are different ways of thinking, but that's the way a lot of people think out there. Um, right. And for a lot of people, including myself at times, man, there's a, uh, there's a lot of times where whenever you're laying all that money out to run for that big money race, you're sitting here looking at it, and me personally, I've laid a bunch of hundreds out and sat here and been like, man, this is already not fun for me. And and in that particular scenario, I saved for that race for like six months ahead of time, so I had the money. It wasn't like it was affecting me if, if I positive, well, I mean positive, it could definitely be positive, but negatively, it wasn't affecting me financially because I had specifically saved for that particular race. But man, you know, when you start laying out all those hundreds 
And in my scenario, I'm sitting here, I'm like, this is a whole month worth of paying for my kids' daycare right here, you know? And it's uh, it just makes it too serious. I don't like it being that serious. I do this for a hobby, not for a living. Uh, you know, I fully expect whenever I leave, if I have X amount of dollars in my wallet, if I come back with zero dollars in my wallet, I don't want it to negatively affect my family because of my hobby. I think there's a lot of people like that, man. And uh, ultimately, I'm glad that the big money races are there because I think that it breathed new life into bracket racing and it gives us something to watch and to each his own. Um, it's not a good or a bad thing, but uh, ultimately, um, I think it's great that Vashon's willing to do that. And that's a guy who's legitimately doing stuff for the love of the sport. Uh, he's also doing a quick series up there, which is going right. to be extremely cool. Hopefully we can figure out how to do some streaming on that type of deal. So we can see that because everybody loves seeing the fast car stuff, especially at a track like that. Um, I always say it's one thing to see two cars, two cars go fast at like a national event facility. You could slow those cars down a half second. Like you could, you could go four flat at gateway and look slow. You could go four fifty at your local track and it looks like you're blazing down through there i mean it's right it's just cool right well hang in there guys we're gonna cut to a quick commercial break i can see cp's made his way into the stage and you can too so give me just a quick seconds we will be right back to answer to ask some questions and answer some questions to cp racing promotions very own cody palage don't go anywhere guys our third generation slim wireless vehicle scale is worth the wait. You can read cross weight, side by side weight, and front and rear weight in addition to the standard weight for each wheel and total vehicle weight. You can also view on the included backlit LCD screen complete with control buttons. The full size 15 by 15 inch aluminum scale pads are only 1 516th inches thick. Each pad can hold up to 1,750 pounds for a total scale capacity of 7,000 pounds. the skinny on the pro form slim fit radiator systems they are the industry's first and only four inch thick radiator system that's the radiator plus the shroud plus the fan combined, combined. a complete unit that's up to 40 percent thinner than others on the market fully assembled for performance out of the box eliminate the stress and frustration that comes as precious weekend hours are lost trying to upgrade your cooling system with major space constraints the SlimFit system utilizes two patented pieces of technology, allowing for a seamlessly integrated radiator system with a third tank in the center of the radiator where the high-performance fan motor is installed inside the core, not hanging off the shroud. The coolant can flow all the way through the radiator, eliminating dead space. And it looks especially great under the hood. Sleek angles, eye-catching perforations, and a smooth aluminum shroud complete the streamlined four-corner design that defines style and a well put together engine bay. BRG Motorsports 3D printed racing parts are able to provide you with whatever you desire to enhance your drag racing operation. Items like safety belt magnets, nitrous bottle holders, and even quick release delay box mounts are able to be obtained from BRG Motorsports 3D printed racing parts. Have a look at top selling items such as helmet hooks and steering wheel hooks, which are proven to make it easier to maneuver throughout your race car. You can contact BRG Motorsports 3D Printed Racing Parts at telephone number 765-729-1177. All right, all right, welcome back. Go on Bracket Racing, thanks for being with us here today. Uh, on this uh, episode 148, it's hard to believe me and Casey have been doing this for this long, Casey. I, 148 episodes. I didn't, I didn't know it was that many until we started going back and counting them a few months ago. But can't be possible without Driven Racing Oil, Ken Jones Performance, Crew Chief Pro, Syntex Printing, Team 14 Motorsports, BRG Motorsports, 3D Printed Racing Parts, 8th Mile Apparel. Get you some of that GBR merch. Uh, TSR racing products. I just ordered me a, 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 a 
input shaft from them and i'll tell you what old will took care of me got that thing in the mail quick and uh i could get my get my converter changed up so uh definitely a big shout out to those guys who uh who help us out here going bracket racing and as well as your ad here casey and george are really really good at uh being marketing partners so if you're looking to market uh kind of reach out to a excellent community of of bracket racers big money intermediate racers i don't care what kind of racers we are going bracket racing is the place uh where you want to do that at so guys no further ado we got cp promotions on the screen with us and we're going to talk about a little bit of what we experienced um first off with the top bubber extravaganza which i must say i got first hand first hand experience of that race and and uh glad to have T uh, uh, cody on with us so we can talk about that first off cody how's it going today Doing good, just staying busy. I heard that, man, and and I, I I expect nothing less out of you the way I watched you run around uh run around old Port Allen State Capital Raceway in person, Cody. Man, I don't think you sat still the whole time we was there, man. From shaking hands to buying pizzas and a cooler full of sodas uh, or lack thereof, and <laughs> and all that other good stuff, man. You put on a heck of a show on that top bubble race, man. How's it feel? I appreciate it. Yeah, it was. Probably one of the smoothest ones I've ever had since I've been doing this. Uh, we're going to start off. I got a great crew on board this year, George. Got Chase Huffman with me full time. Carson Griffin's with me full time. Carson Russell. Um, first race together, it was like it was a well all machine that had been together for five years. But probably the smoothest one I've ever had. And credit goes to them for making it that way. Yeah, man, and and Casey, man, I know you weren't there, and hope don't let me hog all the questions. You can ask any questions, tell me to be quiet, but I I got a whole bunch of questions just because I was there. But from <laughs> go ahead, I was just gonna say the one the one thing I want to bring up is what we were talking about a little earlier was the track being too good, and that's where the complaint came from was the track was too good, and I told George <laughs> I said, man, racers complain about everything, don't they? But he but that's. You know, hats off to to you for putting on well, that show and bringing people in to that have the capability of making the track so good that the racers will complain. Well, I <laughs> I, I actually forgot about him. I was on the phone with him earlier. He'll be with me for the for the April race here. Uh, all the credit for that goes to Brandon Mass, hundred percent. Absolutely. Hey, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, CP, I was setting up cameras and it was early. Everybody was probably still asleep. I had a, 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 a one of the largest mosquito swiper, swipers I could find and it still wasn't working. I needed a dang elephant shotgun to take care of some of the mosquitoes. But but all I know is I looked at that track, CP, and, and saw shiny. So I got out on the track. I was like, man, this track, this track looked good. I got out there, stepped on it, expecting for my shoe to come off my foot. Man, it wasn't an ounce of glue on that track yet. It was nothing but rubber on that track, and it looked as if it was fully prepped. So, heck of a job out there uh, on track work. CP, man, talk to me, though, about that ex uh, appreciation race, which, or excuse me, that extravaganza top bubber. That race ended up turning out, I believe, AJ Ash might have took the cookie on that. Am I correct? AJ took out the uh, took the win home in the top over of the shoot, uh, top over of the South Shootout. Um, that was a deal where we put a we put a committee together of five racers, and I had them send me in your 128, your top 128, and for each time your name got put up, you got on a vote, and then we went had each one of them. If you got three or more picks, since there were six people total on the committee, you automatically got invited. And then from there, if you didn't get at three picks, each committee member could handpick 10 that they thought should be in there that did not get in there. Top ball was so spread out, and there's so many good ones there. I mean, you can have a committee member from Alabama that's probably never heard of the – he's heard of the Galettis and the Burlesons and that group from Texas, but he's never he's never heard of the, the B or oh, – I call them the B drivers – so then that's where you have a committee driver from Texas that goes, man, this dude's in my home track and he always wins. He needs to be there. Right. And it, it makes it to where the little people can still get in also. Right. Right. Definitely. 
So that's just a little tidbit about what actually happened at the top bulber. We can get into this a little bit more. If you have any questions or, or feel like you need to see more about that, head over to Go on Bracket Racing or on CP Promotions, uh, one Cody Palage Promotions 1 Facebook page, and find, uh, find the recaps because it was a heck of a race. But coming up here, and shoot, CP, I'm surprised you ain't almost on the road yet. You only got a few more days until April 5th, where the blues, the bluegrass spring warm-up is going to be taking place at London Dragway. Uh, talk to me about this particular race, CP. Uh, three tens off the top uh, for $400. If you double, you get both entries for $600. Bottom bulb is 375 for 300 If you double, you get both entries for 500 Nice. Nice, and I'm seeing the purses here. It's looking like ten granders up top, and then seven grands for the bottom. As Jesus, you you're giving a lot of love to the bottom bulbers. I commend you for that. Seventy five hundred dollars per day. That's a pretty good payout on uh what I would call a what looks to be a really good race uh, for the top and the bottom with that weekend entry looking really good as well. Six hundred dollars to run double entered for ten k three days in a row. Uh, lost CP there for a second. He might come back. CP, you still there? There he is. There he is. You had a yep. call come through, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens to the best of us. But um, looks like the gates are gonna be. Uh, you're gonna be uh, starting going some racing on the fifth through the seventh. Are you parking on the fourth? We are parking on the fourth. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So anybody out there in this area looks like it's out there in London, Kentucky. You don't have anything to do, and there's no reason why you're not going to be at the 10K race, uh, the Bluegrass Spring Warm-Up. 10 off the top, 7,500 off the bottom for three days in a row, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, get in the whole race for 600 double entered for the whole weekend. But we won't stop there with CP because we know there's more to come with the Racers Appreciation Bash going on just about a week later. April 11th through the 14th, back out there at Port Allen, Louisiana, where the top bulber extravaganza took off. Okay, talk to me about this. Are we going to see a bottom bulber shootout at this race? Did I hear that correctly? We will see a bottom bulber shootout at this one. It's going to be the same format as top bulb, different committee members, same format, though, and same 10K to win, free. It's a free entry if you're invited, no buyback, 10K to win. I heard that CP, and I'm just sitting here looking at the uh, the flyer. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, ten up top, two to the runner up, all the way down to the thirty seconds where you'd be getting fifty, four hundred dollars to enter for the whole weekend off the top, three hundred to enter on the bottom, worth seventy five hundred to, to win it, eight hundred to runner it up, semis to three hundred, and then the eighths you're gonna get to fifty. CP man, a lot of thought had to go into this. I even see a duck race. You want to talk about that one? Well, you know, you remember this one started, you were there. This one started at I-30. Correct. Uh, back when I did races at I-30, that's where my little honey hole there was for a second. And we're back home in Louisiana now. We're central. You got Texas, Louisiana. You got Mississippi, Bama, Arkansas to the north of us. It's prime central location in the south. Um, it's basically where all my racing buddies get to come hang out with me for one weekend, but I mean, that deal there, four tens for 400 off the top. The bottom bulb, if you do the math for it, if you buy the four-day tech card, it's $75 a day for 7500 to win a day on the bottom. Wow. Wow. And CP, man, it, it, we're not going to stop there. I don't I don't necessarily know what you're going to have going on at this racer's appreciation party, but I just know for one thing, somebody need to bring me some crawfish because I'm going to be there and I had me a bag of crawfish from someplace, man. And I mean to tell you, it was spectacular. And we're gonna I, we're gonna probably head to crawfish. We're gonna we're gonna line up a race of appreciation dinner for Saturday night. Um we're gonna probably line up a practice tree race for Wednesday night. You were there for the one we had here when we couldn't race on Friday. That one I felt was a blast. Uh felt like everybody really enjoyed themselves. We had hundred and sixty entries in it, I think. So Right. Well, we're going to have all of that. We got a live DJ for Friday night, Saturday night. We're going to put the duck race together for Saturday and Sunday. We're going to pick eight random tech cards that are not left in eliminations come to end of third round. And if those eight guys want to run, save card deal for no uh, with no buybacks, free entry. And what's the payout on it, George? I don't have to fly in front of me. What's the name of it? Is that the duck race? That's the duck race. $1,000 to win. Box. Yep. Yeah. For box. 500, 500 for no box. box. Yep. Yep. That, yep. That's just 
way of us coming back, we're going to pick eight random tech cards of somebody that's not in at the end of the third round and try to give them some fuel money to go back home with. I heard that. I heard that. And definitely looking forward to being in attendance. I will have my wife with me on this one, so we'll have some swinging action going on out there. Uh, live right here on Warm Bracket Racing. We will bring this event live. and at, don't, don't watch it on YouTube, guys. Get your cars. Get your trailers. Fuel it up. Get you some methanol or whatever you're running. I hope you're not running gas because it just costs too much money. But if you are, bring that with you too. And show up to the track and let's have some fun out here because if I'm telling you, if you were at the first race, the top bulber, and or, or if you watched it on GBR, you missed out. You should have been in attendance, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. But, CP, you're not going to stop there, and I, you're not even going to stop here because I know you got a race in November as well. But talk to me about the Green Dirt West Texas Showdown, April 26th through the 28th. Uh, I'm excited to get out to West Texas. Uh, those guys travel some unbelievable amount of hours to be at all of my stuff from Thanksgiving to the top over deal to the April race that we're going to have, uh, here in Port Allen. It, this is a thank you for, to those guys for supporting me. And also I think that part of the country needs something. It has gotten unbelievable feedback on it. I think if we have three days of great weather, it's going to possibly be the biggest thing to ever hit West Texas. Yeah, I agree with that 100% as well. Saturday and Sunday event would looks like to be a Friday night box gamblers. It looks like a Friday night, no box gamblers as well. Uh, definitely going to be a really, really good race here. And uh, the start of something good to come, I do believe. We'll see what happens out there at Pinwell Knights Dragway out in Odessa, Texas. Not to buy about six hours to the west of me, so you'll probably see me out there playing around somewhere um, particularly. So definitely, CP. What else you got to tell to us about here before we get out of here for the day? Definitely appreciate you coming in and dropping knowledge on what you got coming up. Uh, with with races, um, ten granders uh, at an excellent entry fee with excellent payback at that. What else you got for us, CP? Coming up. That's it. I'm just excited for the month of April to get here. We got we're on the road three. Well, technically we're on the road three out of four weeks. I'm gonna feel like I'm on the road even though I'm at home. Uh, George, shout out to you for the live stream that we had here in March. Uh, probably one of the best ones I've seen quality wise. So hats off to you for having the right equipment and doing it. Uh, can't wait for you to get back here in April. Hey, man, we'll see you soon is all I got to say. And again, I know y'all listening to me out there, Louisiana. I need some crawfish. Um, so somebody, somebody showed me where the crawfish hole is. I heard that the fishing got a little bit better. I've been doing my research. So it don't cost as much money to get some crawfish out there right now. And, yeah, it'll, uh, probably be, it'll probably be good by the time you get here. It'll be after yeah. Easter, bro. Yeah, I can't wait. So, <laughs> okay, man, we appreciate you coming in. Casey, what you got closing? Anything? Well, man, just uh, it's looking sunny outside right now. Hopefully we have a great week of racing this week and next week and the next and the next and the next, man. So we got a ton coming up. Uh, Cody, man, I don't think I got to tell you to stay busy, do I? <laughs> no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good with that by myself. Cody gonna be you busy, come, man. You need to come about. You need to come about seven hours west to London, case. I might have to do that, man. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! All I know is, guys, be in attendance if you can be. If you don't got nothing on, going on, or if you do, mark off whatever you do got going on and come on out here and race the Cody Pillage Racing Promotions CP Promotions Racers Appreciation, uh, the Spring. Uh, the Bluegrass Spring Race or the West Texas uh, Green Grass Showdown. <laughs> one of these races is green dirt. Sorry about that. But one of these races is definitely going to be right up your alley. Um, so hit all three while you're at it. On I behalf of G... Say it again. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Hit all three of them while you're at it. You might as well come hit all three of these things. And, um, man, I'm really looking forward to it myself. So, hey, guys, before we uh, before we get out of here, thanks for joining in. Thanks for uh, hitting that like and subscribe button. And um, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thanks for joining us.